So tonight we're talking about, uh, we're going into the, the lesson tonight for teaching methods, but I wanted to do a quick review over the things we've talked about for the last couple of weeks um, before we move forward. Um, we talked in the first, the first week, we did the overview and uh, looked at the syllabus and all those things, and then we talked about being ministry gifts. Remember that you are the ministry gift, uh, and your gift is not only for TCC, but for the church, in my, outside the church, the body of Christ. Uh, so uh, remember that, that you're the gift, and the body of Christ is the recipient uh, of your skills um, as going forward. We talked about the qualities and characteristics of a teacher, uh, good and bad. Uh, some of the qualities that um, we have liked and have seen in other teachers, and we want to emulate those and continue with those. And there's the other qualities that um, that we didn't like. Uh, we don't want to follow those. We want to use that as motivation to not go down that road. So if we remember lazy teachers, then that's the teacher that we don't want to be. So we want to uh, do the best we can to not be the lazy teacher or to be the one that makes people bad, feel bad about asking questions in class or whatever those bad characteristics were. Um, I wrote, wrote down some of them um, that you guys have said, uh, closed-minded, micromanaged, lost the will to teach, mean, you know, those types of things. I want us to keep those qualities in mind and be careful that we don't fall into that. But to be organized and motivated, uh, adapt to students, life as a testimony, those types of things, those good qualities we want to definitely have because remember your character is what's going to make your teaching more effective. Then we talked about the purpose and power of a teacher. And we started out, I asked about what was the uh, similarity uh, between a teacher and an archer. Anybody remember what that similarity is? What does archer and teacher have in common? Preparation, right? It was one of them. Preparation, yes. Making a chat note. Focus. <laughs> Makita put in the, the chat. Focus. Yes, definitely focus. Uh, focus. Preparation. Uh, the big one is aim. The archer takes aim. So does the teacher. The teacher has an aim. The teacher has a goal as to what uh, we want the, te the students to learn. We're going to talk about a little bit about that uh, tonight as well. And also the power. Uh, you get your power from God. You God empowers the teachers to teach, and it's most effective by your lifestyle. So keep those in mind as well going forward. So tonight we're going to talk about the teaching methods, and this is not all inclusive. There are so many different teaching methods, and I'm just going to go over a few of them. Uh, so there might be others that you've heard about, others that you have seen, others that you uh, become more familiar with, and we'll see those as we go along as well. But Tonight, I just want to cover, cover a few of them, uh, not all encompassing. So uh, starting with the lecture, some of them we're going to be familiar with, some of them we won't. This is probably one that uh, a few, most of us, if not all of us, are familiar with, is the lecture way of teaching, which is this one-way communication with interaction only at the end. Um, used a lot. Maybe not very popular. I know with me that's not my favorite place or my favorite teaching method, but it doesn't mean it's not, it's not good. It doesn't mean it's bad. It does have its place. And when used properly, uh, it can be very effective. But it is one-way communication. And keep in mind with each one of these teaching methods, there are advantages and there are disadvantages um, to each one of them. So there is no one that's better than the other or, and none more preferred than the other. It's based on your audience, what you're trying to teach, the material, a whole lot of factors going to deciding what method of teaching that you want to use. So we have the lecture, which is one-way communication. Uh, interaction is only at, the <clears throat> only at the end. The advantage is that you can get a whole lot of information out in a short period of time. The disadvantage is there isn't very much interaction or questioning. So you're unsure of, of whether the students have actually uh, gain the information, or if they even understand it. Uh, so, but it is an effective teaching method. Uh, there's the discussion uh, method, 
It's more student-oriented, where there's lots of interaction and great for brainstorming. So that's a good advantage of it. The disadvantage of it is that with all that's going on, uh, you can lose focus, and we can go off topic, and there can be a whole lot of side discussion and a whole lot of side uh, conversation, and it kind of lose focus on what is the, the central teaching uh, example or what te central teaching goal, I should say. There's the demonstration method, how we uh, show students how to do something. Uh, it's an attention getter. So we demonstrate something, and then we allow the students uh, to do whatever it is that we did, or they imitate us in doing it. Uh, very good for students who like to be hands-on. Uh, some students don't want to sit in the seat. Uh, I don't know if they have ADD or whatever it is, but they just don't want to be still. And they, they learn better when they're actually doing it. And, and, uh, more hands-on. So it's a, it's a good method for that, for those type of students. Uh, disadvantage is that it can be long. It can be lengthy, especially if the student gets into issues or has problems or has things going on. So it can, it can be time consuming. But if you can make the time for it, then it can be quite effective. Uh, next set, uh, case study. Uh, if you're in a particular class where they're teaching you uh, ethics or they're teaching you some sort of subject and you have to learn to apply it in real world situations, uh, they may just give you a, a problem or in a real world problem and have you apply those skills to solving whatever the issue is. So it's good for decision making type of skills and application of the things that you've learned in class. Role play. The students act out roles. These, again, more active, more student interaction, allow students to actually uh, get up and do something and be a part of the roles and be a part of, and they may actually learn a lot by doing uh, more than just actually hearing someone talk all the time. So that can be very effective as well. Uh, you just, again, have to pick the right material and make sure that you keep it reined in because students, although acting and interacting, and get a little bit off focus. So you have to make sure that that's uh, curtailed or, or corralled or boundaries around it, so to speak. Uh, the storytelling method uh, used to show real world application. Um, this is where you act where a person tells a story and from the story, you learn how to use that uh, in real world situations. Uh, commonly known in the Bible uh, as parables. This is, uh, Jesus was a master storyteller, used a lot of parables, and used, it, uh, used the uh, agricultural things, elements around him to point out stories that were going to, that uh, lend themselves to real world applications. So very powerful, uh, very good, if you're a good storyteller. Now, if you're not a good storyteller, this may not be a good method to use. Uh, it's good to use uh, if you have that type of that type of ability to be able to do that. Uh, be careful about um, making sure that whatever story you're telling ties into what you're teaching. Uh, you don't want to uh, start your story off and then it doesn't really bring you back. There's got to be focus. There's got to be, uh, you know, there's got to be a way that what you're, the story that you're telling is actually going to apply to the subject that you're teaching. It's quite embarrassing to go through your story, fumble through it, and then get to the end of it, and it didn't really apply, and now you got to adjust. So there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of work that you got to do with that one, but it is very effective if done correctly. Uh, classes outside the classroom. Uh, this is another teaching method. If there's a way in order to teach uh, teach your class um, in a way that's going to help the, the students to embrace and be um, immersed. And whatever you're trying to teach them, uh, this is a great method. Uh, if you're, if one of the lessons is teaching about nature, uh, then sitting out in nature will actually be a very good, uh, or uh, having a class outside where you're sitting in nature uh, could be very effective in teaching uh, teaching the students that lesson. Again, you have to use it appropriately. Uh, is, you have to be careful about the time. Uh, of course, you have to. You can't. Uh, control the weather, but you have to do a little pre-planning with that um, to make sure that you're going to be teaching in a place where 
There won't be, uh, there will be few distractions. Uh, you're gonna have to figure out how much talking you're gonna do and how much you're gonna allow the, the students to be immersed in uh, in nature, and you don't want the two to to uh, to conflict with one another. So there is some um, some advanced thinking, some advanced planning uh, that you're gonna have to do, and but that's with all of these teaching methods, but probably all, mostly for the classes outside because you don't really have control of the, the outside environment. But again, if done correctly, uh, very powerful. Uh, nothing brings the, the, uh, the whole idea of nature, especially if you're talking about looking to the hills from which cometh my help, and then you're able to sit there and look at hills, that might be very powerful to a student who is more visual and wants to see something, doesn't want you to hear you talking about it, or doesn't want to read it off a page all the time. It might be very powerful for them to be able to actually uh, look at mountains. A uh, couple other teaching methods, uh, welcoming new ideas, that's what one place called it, it's actually just brainstorming. Uh, we're trying to come up with new ideas, we're trying to think of a problem solve, then it's just open brainstorming uh, for just coming up with ways to think and different ways to uh, solve issues and solve problems and, and just have conversations. There just has to be uh, corralled. You just have to make sure that you have it uh, under, that it's still focused and it doesn't lose its focus and get out of control. Uh, another method is simulation, which is technology-based. Uh, if you're able to teach something where the student is interacting with the computer, uh, that's happening a lot. We're going a lot to that, very lot of technology-based uh, teaching methods. And so we all have to learn how to use technology uh, in different ways. When I was um, in the military and training or being an instructor, one of the things that, that we had to learn was how to use a simulator which simulated um, air, air, um, air traffic control in the air traffic control environment on a ship, which is what we were teaching, was carrier-based air traffic control. So we ran a simulator, which kind of simulated that. We had the room, we had the, the workstations, the status boards, uh, so it looked like we were actually on the ship, even though we were in a classroom and in a schoolhouse. And we and we had targets on the screen that were part of the simulation, and we had to learn how to work with the machine in order to teach what we needed to teach. And so you may have the opportunity to do that um, based on whatever it is you're teaching. Uh, there's the lesson, which requires two-way communication and combines many other methods to teach us knowledge and skills. So anytime there's, there's a combination of uh, communication and uh, interaction from the students and different visual aids and things like that you know, it, to teach a lesson then all of those and uh, all of those combined together it um, requires you to, to be able to master all of that and to control all of that to some extent so that uh, it continues to keep stay on focus as the teacher is stays focused on, on whatever the, the focus is or whatever the subject is. There is, and we're coming, to, as I mentioned before, coming to more of these computer-based instructions. Um, there are some places where there's a large video screen in the front, and there's individual workstations for the instructor and students that may be coming to that. We're definitely doing the video teletraining, which we're doing right now. Uh, different trains people at different locations through Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Soho, and different other uh, applications or different or other uh, systems and programs where one person is at one place and then training at different locations. Uh, we we're all uh, need or have seen the need to be able to, uh, to teach this way uh, because we're not able to meet physically. We have to have some other way to, to continue training. So it's been a challenge for me to learn uh, Zoom. I think I'm pretty comfortable with it. Uh, still, I'm sure there's other features and factors on there that I haven't learned yet. Uh, but we'll get into that or, or it gets better at it to keep doing it. Uh, practice makes, uh, makes perfect, um, or at least close to perfect, but it does make you more comfortable using it the more you use it. But, so we have to keep practicing at it. And it is difficult. It is challenging. And I know that some people say, you know, 
I'm too old for that, you're not. Uh, you're not never too old to learn. The teacher is always trying to learn, always wants to learn, always is a lifelong learner, uh, not just of the material, but even uh, nowadays it's becoming uh, vital that we become learners of the latest technology uh, so we can remain effective and be able to reach uh, people as well, even if we have to reach them through video teletraining like Zoom, which we're doing now. So never, never, don't ever stop learning. It is a challenge. Um, it is going to be challenging until you're able to master it, but it can be mastered, and, it, and you, it, uh, it's a challenge to be able to take the material that you're trying to learn and to uh, use it, massage it, do what you got to do, adjust it in order to fit whatever the, uh, the uh, teaching method that you have. Um, don't always have the sit down and face-to-face -face, uh, teaching method, so there might be something else that you want to try. And I just want to introduce you to all of those because you, uh, those are going to be very useful to you. And I want you to be aware that you have them at your disposal to teach the lessons and learning and learning what your students are going to respond to better. If they're not the type of people who respond to lectures, then you don't want to use the lecture method. Uh, if you have students who are a bit unruly and you don't trust them, with the brainstorming just to be able to go out and do whatever, then you have to figure out something else, more of the demonstration method, which is more of them following you. Um, it depends on your audience. It depends on what you're teaching. It depends on what's going to be most effective. But there are different ways to teach. There are different methods of, to teaching. There isn't one method. One isn't any better than the other. It depends on the skill level of the instructor, what you're teaching, the subject matter, the students that you have, the size of the class, uh, where, where the class is going to be. Do you have a physical uh, location? What's the size of the physical, physical location? How much time do you have? Because some of them are going to be more time consuming than the others. Uh, what um, type of technology is available at your site? Uh, you don't want to schedule vid video teletraining if they, if they can't support the technology or any other computer-based instruction. And then with, uh, with the computer-based instruction, there's a whole other set of challenges that come with uh, support for that, with uh, cords, and do you have the right links and the right hookups and the, the right emails and all these other things. So there's a lot of, a lot of pre-planning that goes into uh, some of these methods, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's bad and it doesn't mean that it's, it's not effective because it can be very effective uh, if done uh, correctly. Let me stop here and see if you have any uh, comments or questions. I see everybody's camera is off, but I assume you're still listening, um, and everybody's muted. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, Pastor. Good, good to see you uh, coming in. So let me see if there's I'm any here. comments or questions. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hi, Pastor. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Anybody's tuning. Okay. Everybody good? Josh if, is driving, so he won't be able to join us tonight. So if, if, if I could just uh co-sign with, with the point that you're referring to with the different uh methods of teaching and, and even when it comes to what you know our current environment online, I think at the end of the day, we just gotta remember why we're doing it. Why are we learning new technologies? Why are we doing the pre-work that is necessary, you know. Uh, we want to make sure that in our teaching that we are doing everything we can to eliminate every excuse, to eliminate every distraction, so that our audience can focus on the most important thing, which is the Word of God. And, and you know, that I think that's the most important thing. I think that's what's going to help us when it comes to the motivation to learn new, new things, the motivation and uh, to go through the rigor of preparing uh, for something. I mean, you may spend more time preparing. You will spend more time preparing than you actually will spend teaching. But the reason why is because you want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to distract or take away or compete with the word of God, because that's the most important thing. Absolutely. Thanks. So, um, yeah, and that, that's very true. You definitely, there was a lot of preparation. We're going to see that. Actually, we're going to some of the lesson elements, which we're going into next. 
So we'll see that, and that's where you want uh, the bulk of your, uh, of your time to be spent is in preparation, because that will help you in the long run to gain confidence uh, to teach what you're teaching. Uh, if you can, it's going to give you confidence to stand before people or stand before, to sit before a screen or, or uh, however, whatever the class structure is going to be, and be able to competently present your material and direct the class. And there will be distractions and there will be um, uh, challenges and questions you didn't, uh, didn't count on and things like that. Uh, so the more prepared you are ahead of time, uh, the better your chance to be able to handle those types of situations uh, and still keep the class moving along so that it accomplishes the objectives and the goals that you wanted to uh, to accomplish because you're the teacher and you set the tone for the class. Uh, you're, you set the tone for the environment. We talked about that with the power of, a te of, of the teacher uh, last week, that, or was that last, week before last? Well, whatever we talked about, uh, the power of the power and purpose of the teacher the purpose is to aim and uh, aim them, but the power is that you uh, have that major influence over the environment and the atmosphere that the teaching is taking place. And so, the better you are prepared ahead of time, the more uh, more competently you're going to be able to do that. Anybody else uh, comments or questions or want to share? Okay, so I'm sorry. No, thought I heard something. So uh, we talked about the different teaching methods. Now we talk about some of the basic lesson elements, uh, the things that here's where um, part of your, the big part of not just part of your preparation, but the, the four basic elements that go into that you're going to want to, to do in your in when you're teaching. And it starts with the introduction. And it's in this uh, section that you want to gain the attention of your audience. You want to capture them and set the stage for what you're about to present them. Uh, so uh, you want to introduce yourself your, with your title, position, and experience. Obviously, you're only going to need to do that once. If you're, if you're doing it to the same audience over and over again, uh, I don't think you need to tell them your position and experience and title every time. Uh, <laughs> You probably don't even have to introduce yourself. Probably only have to do that once, uh, but if you're, uh, but for the first time, you will uh, and should. And you want to give them your experience so they know to listen to you. Uh, they want to know that you have some experience in what you're about to teach, uh, because if, uh, and, and there's going to be people in the audience who are looking for that. Uh, they're going to be asking, why should I be listening to this person? What experience do they have to be able to teach me anything? Um, so. You want to uh, just, you don't have to go through your, read your whole dossier or a resume. Um, it can be just, just a short blurb about the experience you have in you know, dealing with whatever it is that you're about to teach or how your experience connects to what you're about to teach uh, and then go on from there. You want to uh, obviously give your topic, some of this is common sense. Uh, you want to give your topic and what the students will learn from it because you're trying to uh, motivate the students to, again, to listen. You want to gain their attention. So if you tell them what they will learn, for some students, most students, that will get their attention. It will let them know why they're there and what they will get from it. Uh, state the importance of the topic. Um, and one of the things that, that they trained us in the military was the uh, WIIFM, which means what's in it for me. You know, what's in it for me? That's the main question that you want to answer is what's in it for me, for the student, because that's what the student is asking. What's in it for me? What am I going to learn from this? And, and then when I learn it, what, am I, what can I do with it? So if you can uh, think through those types of topics and think, think through those types of things to gain their attention, to spark their, their learning, to spark their uh, motivation and enthusiasm, to give you their attention for the rest of what you're going to teach, this is so important to gain their attention right off the bat so that before you get into the main teaching topic, because if you haven't gained their attention and you've lost them, you probably, then they probably are not going to listen to anything else that you say. So it's very important that uh, you do that, get very well at gaining. Now, introductions kind of check tricky, at least for me. Um, Pastor Teray might, might have uh, a different spin on it. 
but I found sometimes the introduction is, is challenging. And so I, until I get comfortable, um, and my wife will testify to this, I do a lot of ums and a lot of uhs and a lot of hesitation and a lot of this. And, you know, until, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, maybe five minutes into it, I'm more relaxed <laughs> and then the ums go away. But to get into the body of the material, you might be different uh, in your, your teaching career. Uh, but I found that a little bit difficult. So I, I tried to spend the uh, time thinking, what can I do to gain attention? What can I do to capture? Just like before tonight's lesson, I had the cartoon. Um, questions are a good use uh, uh, to motivate the students to begin to, to pay attention uh, to what you're about to say. And there's a whole, you can use just about anything as long as it's leads into whatever you're about to teach. So you, the questions are good, uh, stories, pictures, uh, reviewing the previous information, just like we did tonight. We started out with a review before we went into this material. And if you're teaching um, teaching a, a, a different subject, or I'm sorry, the same subject, but it's broken up into parts or, or a different topic, then it's always good to go back to the previous week and tie that into the, the next week. Uh, so that there's a continuation that's going on there. But uh, be creative about different ways, uh, different things you can use. Uh, a method that you see on, probably see on television a lot of times is people will come on questions, come on and just start asking you questions. Um, are you are you sick? Are you tired? Are you this? Are you overweight? Are you this? Now they're asking those questions to get your attention. They want you to answer, well, yes, yes, I am. Yes, I'm this, and yes, I'm that. And then they lead you into whatever it is that they're about to tell you. Uh, tell you. Are you tired of your detergent, and do you wish it would clean better? And you're thinking, oh, yes, I am tired of my detergent. I wish it would clean better. Well, we've got the detergent for you. So questions, <laughs> just a quick example there, but questions can be very powerful into getting uh, students' attention, uh, gearing, or gearing their mind and getting them ready to learn what you're about to teach them. Uh, so keep that uh, in the back of your mind and keep that in your toolbox uh, to use that when necessary uh, to help to, to uh, capture and even recapture attention after a while as well. Then after you do the introduction, gaining their attention, um, do all that stuff, now we go into the presentation, which is actually teaching the lesson. Here's the body of the information that you're unfolding to the student, that you're breaking down to them and making plain to them. Uh, in your teaching plan, and we're gonna see, uh, I'm gonna show you, there's a couple examples I have that at the end. Uh, when you're unfolding, you wanna do it in a logical order that makes sense, uh, that the student can follow along with you. Um, you have to decide in teaching their lesson where, how much class involvement you want. Are the, are the students allowed to ask questions, or do you want them to, to wait to a certain to the end of a certain section? Uh, can they ask uh, questions at any time? Those types of things. So you want to uh, make sure that you're controlling or having some uh, some control over the class involvement, uh, where you want the, the students and questions to come in, or or there's comments. Sometimes their comments can can go off track. How would you handle that? If they want to make a comment or ask a question, and it kind of takes you away from from what your what your aim and what your goal is, do you follow after them, or do you uh, bring it back and stay on target? And we can talk about that at another time. And this is where it's always good to to know ahead of time what you're teaching. <laughs> kind of you know kind of sounds like a duh type of statement, but you want to be familiar about what you're teaching because sometimes the student will ask a question that's answered later on in the lesson. So that's, a, and that's wonderful, because then you say, you know what, that's a great question. That's gonna be answered later on, so hold on to that question, uh, and that's gonna be answered in the, in the next section, or the section after next, or wherever it comes from. So uh, you wanna make sure that, that you're knowledgeable of that information so you can keep it flowing in a logical order. Uh, class involvement, time management. How much time do you have to teach? Uh, if you have an hour, uh, don't be halfway through your material and it's 40, you know, you're coming up on 45 minutes and you're only halfway through. You know, you have to be knowledgeable of time management. Uh, do we keep, how long do we have? Are we on target? 
And then that kind of sets the stage for can you take questions? If you have some extra time, you can. Maybe you can, if that student asks that question that's a little bit off target, maybe you have a little time to address that. If you can address it and get back on schedule and stay, uh, stay on schedule with your time management, that leads to flexibility. Um, again, I kind of mentioned that or you know, already mentioned already, how do you deal with questions? How do you deal with comments? How do you deal with all those things? Uh, and sometimes when teaching, the, the student's uh, comments or questions may, take, may be different than what you wanted, but it may be more effective for the class in general. So you have to be, con and be, in be flexible, uh, but you, know, you have to uh, balance that whether, that's, whether that's a good road to go on, or do we stay on what I prepared for, or, or can we go off on this, on this side road um, and, and follow that line of thinking? And that might be what the, what the students take away from it. It may be more of a powerful lesson. Um, I've, I've been in classes where the students have asked questions, and that seemed like a better discussion than what I was going to teach. And so it seemed, well, let's go that way. You know, let, let's, let's talk about that. Let's clear that up. Uh, and then we see if we can tie in what I had, and if we don't, we can cover it another time. But there is, but be flexible uh, if you at all possibility, if all possible. And creativity, uh, be creative in your presentation. Uh, we use those other tools that we talked about: the uh, technology, uh, videos, music, um, pictures. Um, you know, whatever is going to help you teach the lesson. Uh, if you can bring in, if you're teaching that Jesus is the rock. If you can bring in an actual rock, I think that's awesome. That's how, that's creative teaching. You know, what, what can I use in this lesson that's going to help the students learn this lesson? You know, so if there's, if there's some sort of visual aid of some sort, uh, then do that and, and use those things uh, to help the, the students to learn. So we have the introduction, uh, we talked about the presentation, and then after you presented your material, uh, then you have the review and summary where you're just checking for understanding. Um, you go over the key points that, that, you, that you taught. Uh, you don't reteach the whole thing. You, they just were taught, so there's no need to reteach. But you can summarize and go over key points. Uh, identify and correct any errors that they have in, in understanding the material. You can ask questions. Um, okay, well, we just talked about this. So, you know, either pick on someone uh, to answer or you can just throw the question out generally uh, and see how their comprehension and understanding is of what you just taught. And then uh, you can correct them, identify them, go over key points, and just make sure that, that they understood what you, what you learned, or what you just taught them. Now, keep in mind, you may not go over each one of these points under each one of these sections, but this is, again, an overview, and it's general, and I just want you to be aware of it uh, because you may or may not use them all the time. And then the final point is, under basic lesson elements, is the assignment, um, which allows you to see how students are taking responsibility for their learning. Nobody likes homework and assignment. They say the word homework, and it's like you curse them. But it does give the students a chance to be involved in their own learning, and it builds confidence when they're able to complete the homework. You just have to make sure that it's, it's varied because of different types of homework, and that is worthwhile, that is tied to whatever you've been teaching them. Uh, to give, uh, when you're teaching about um, colors, and to give them an assignment that has to deal with letters, well, that might not be worthwhile for them unless it's a preview for the next lesson. So we learned about colors. Next week, we're going to learn about lessons. So here's the work to, to complete ahead of time before we get into the next lesson. So it can be a review of what's already been taught, or it can be a preview of what we're going to talk about next week. And I've done that a couple of times in this class. Uh, the, the homework was setting up for discussion for the following week. So use that to your advantage. If you're teaching, you know, if you know you're going to be back and teaching a, a class on a consistent basis, obviously you don't want to hand out, this, you know, probably not a good idea, although it may be, but I, I don't know about handing out homework um, that's going to review or preview or maybe a preview for stuff if you're not going to be the one teaching or you're not going to be back. 
may not. You, know, you may not want to do that. For a review, yes. Uh, but if you're not coming back, then I don't know that you want to do that for preview. You have to play that by ear. All right. Comments or questions? Let me stop here and do a do a check for understanding and see how we're doing. Everyone's still muted and cameras off, but I assume you're still with me. Hey, Pastor. Good. Got a thumbs up from Kita. Okay, everybody's here. Good, good, good. Yeah. So I did want to I did want to comment on the flexibility. Okay. Um, that was something that I struggled with really bad, um, mainly because I struggle with multitasking. So when someone, if I was in the middle of doing like a Bible study and someone would uh, either make a comment or like they wouldn't even make ask a question. They would just have something to say, like a comment to say, you know, it would kind of like throw me off. Okay. And then I would be just crazy, not knowing where to, you know, not knowing where to go. I didn't know how to be flexible when it came to um, a comment or a question. So I'm really excited about learning how to be more flexible when it comes to that, um, because I do want to be able to still know what I'm talking about, even if there was a pause in the midst of, you know, speaking. Okay. Yeah. And, and that, thank you for being uh, transparent and honest about that, because that is, that is very challenging when it comes to the presentation, because you've studied your, you've studied a certain body of material. So this is, you've got in your mind what you want to teach and how you mm -hmm. want to go. And, mm -hmm. and it's just very easy to get so locked into that, that this is, this is where I'm going. This is where I feel comfortable. And this is what I'm going. This is the path that I'm going. Flexibility mm -hmm. comes with experience and comes with time. It, it okay. comes with, with doing it. Uh, it. It comes with your preparation ahead of time, so that you're yeah, so that you're competent in what you're going to teach. But flexibility is one of those things that uh, you you learn it better uh, on the fly, on the job, I guess you could say. Uh, okay. When, uh, what I've learned, a couple things that I've learned when it comes to flexibility is. Uh, like you said, someone will make a comment. They don't ask a question. They just they just make a comment. And so if they make a comment, and if you can tie their comment into your material, then that's great. But even if you can't, you can say, well, thank you for that comment, and then go on. Okay? Then just keep going with whatever it is. That, you know, acknowledge their comment. Thank you for that. And then you, right. you then you stay on track with what you got. Okay. Now, now, if you can tie it in, that's a good segue. But if you can't, mm -hmm. that's okay too. Thank you for that. Then we're gonna keep moving. <laughs> you know? Okay. And, and that you know that <laughs> way you acknowledge what they said. You you gave them that space and time. But if it didn't yeah. tie in, because you're going to and I've had students who just want to make a comment just to make a comment just to hear their own voice, just to, just to let everybody else around them know that they're smart. I don't know. You're going to have all types of students. You know, some people just want to show how smart they are. Uh, so mm -hmm. thank you for that comment. Okay, now moving on. <laughs> you know, don't be afraid to do that. It's your classroom. You know, it, it's your class environment. Uh, and, and so you, you set the tone for it. Uh, so, uh, and, and so it's going to, like, I guess in a nutshell, it's going to take a little while of doing that, but don't be afraid to, okay, thank you for that. Thank you for your comment. Moving on. Let's go to the next slide or let's, let's just keep moving in that, you know, okay. you may have to do that. Wonderful. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, we're working on the assignment. So I, I sent you these. Um, these are just A's. Um, it's not anything that you have to stick to. Um, re um, what, they, what is the word? Uh, religiously. Um, oh, what is the word? Like a, phar a pharisaical. I don't want you to be a pharisaical type of, you know, I have to stick to this because this is what it gave me. No, this is just an idea as you're planning what you're going to teach. And these are just questions to ask about your aim when we talk about the the, the 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 teacher is the one that sets the aim 
You know, what's your aim? What do, what do you want your students to, what's your response that you would like to see from them? Not that you will all the time because they may not, but what is the what is your goal for them? Uh, what do you want them to to feel and to know and to do a guideline? Thank you, <laughs> my babe's always helping me <laughs> uh, in the in the chat. But what is it, you know what's the what do you want them to do with it? Uh, if you go through that, and you don't have to go through that for every lesson, you know, uh, but it is a good a good guideline to start from. Um, what is your aim? What is your goal? What do you want your students to do? What do you want them to feel? What do you, well, how do you want, what do you want them to know? Um, and then what will you do in order to help that come about? Um, what's your, your development? How, how will you engage your students? What other tools can you use? Uh, what other tools do you have with you? Uh, what can you think of and be creative and coming up with ways to, to, uh, to come up with tools that's going to help you to present the material to the students and then engage them and motivate them to learn. Um, those, uh, I know particularly when teaching young people, uh, I say young people, I'm <laughs> teenagers and things like that, uh, a lecture probably is not gonna do it. So if you can come up with something that you, that you feel is going to capture their attention, uh, then that's, those are the types of things that you wanna look into using. Uh, what the lesson application, what's your, the lesson action, and then looking into next week, if you're teaching, you know, a, a different topic, or you're on a, a staying on a topic, and uh, every week, then how, what do you need to do this week that's going to uh, begin the discussion and help move into next week? So, uh, take a look at that and see. Hopefully, that helps um, as you're looking at it and begin to you know, stir up and spark some. Um, creativity, and some, uh, some pre-planning. Because the, the better you are at planning ahead of time, the more confident and confident you're going to be at when you're actually teaching. Uh, comments or questions, anybody? What do you think of that, uh, of that document or that guideline that I sent? Any thoughts on it? I like it because it gives you the opportunity. I mean, it has those questions like what I'll do to help my students um, see, you know what I mean? Like things to think of because I am an overthinker and over preparer. And so, you know, having this will kind of in some instances rein me in like, okay, did I do that with that? That's the question to confirm against it. Oh, okay, good. You know? rather than having a, what, 25-page lesson in a one-hour, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. That's good. And, yeah, so, and over, I found that uh, it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. Uh, with over-prepared, you can chop stuff out and you can skip things. You know, under-prepared, you have to try to fill in stuff <laughs> when you're running short. So over-prepared might be the best. But you do want to stay within your time frame. You still want to make sure, like you said, that you uh, that you're uh, reining it in a little bit. So I'm glad that that's able to do that for you. Anybody else? I think it's good because it allows you to personalize it for you. Yeah. It gives you, for me, it gives a good guideline. So I may be the fun teacher, but then I also want to have some substance with it. So it's like, okay, ask questions, kind of give you a focus, um, just kind of give me some guidelines that I would go through, like you said, guidelines, and so they just help. And so, I, like um, Stephanie was saying, Elder Stephanie was saying, you can take the information, you have a whole bunch of information, you can kind of tailor it to, you know, um, the audience, what the topics are, what they're discussing, that kind of thing. But you have all this you have these, answers, these questions answered, so it kind of gives you a base. Absolutely. Thank you. So that, that's yours. Obviously, you know, obviously it's yours. Uh, good place to start, good place to ask those questions, to plan ahead of time, and, and to be prepared for as much as possible, uh, though you can't foresee everything that's going to happen uh, 
in the in the class or in the teaching session, but you can prepare as best you can for it. And I think when you go through those things and you actually follow them, now uh, you don't have to be you know rigid to in it uh, and follow it you know to the letter, but you personalize it uh, to your own style and what's working for you. And I think it's a great tool. Um, the second thing is, is second item or paper that I sent you is kind of the same thing, um, just a step-by-step -step place. But the reason, the main reason why I wanted to, to send this one was because of the, the first block, which was this wasn't on the, the other paper that I gave you previously, was prayer. And I can't overemphasize enough prayer before you're, while you're planning, uh, before your lesson, during your lesson, prayer, prayer, prayer because you need to know what the Holy Spirit wants you to teach that day. You want to teach the way he wants you to teach. You want to aim where he wants you to aim. You want to bring out the things he wants you to bring out. Uh, you need the, the direction of the Holy Spirit to give you that creativity and that guidance. Uh, even for if you're struggling with being flexible, Holy Spirit will help you be more flexible. You're struggling with creativity. How can I capture my students' attention? He gives you creative ideas on how to do that. Uh, helps you to be more competent and confident in the, the main body of the material that you have, sticking to your topic, uh, those types of things. Prayer is essential. Um, I would never, I do not recommend trying to teach anybody if you have not prayed ahead of time. So we, that's why we pray without ceasing. We stay prayed up. Um, yeah. So prayer is absolutely vital. I'm so glad that that this, um, this paper put it first because that's where it's got to start is prayer. Then there's your reading, which is part of your preparation. Uh, last week, what can we what can we talk about last week if we're if we're continuing under this this subject and, and there's different layers to it. What could we take from last week and bring it into this week? And uh, then you have the goals, key concepts, your objectives. Uh, lesson outline is is a good habit to get into. Um, the, uh, the previous paper helps you to write that out, but if you have an outline of, of how you want it to flow and uh, being able to do that, uh, that helps a lot. What are going to be your opening activities, and your, which is your introduction, your teaching activities, which is the presentation, and then the closing activities, which is the, uh, the summary. Uh, what material and resources do you need, and do you need to practice with them? Uh, one of the things that, that I had to learn was uh, don't wait till the last second. For, for stuff. So please don't make the mistakes that I've made so many times. Uh, I wanted to teach something and Holy Spirit brought something creative. Hey, let's, you need this to teach this lesson. Uh, you know, and, and it's like, you know, I got to teach on Sunday and it's like Saturday and now I got to figure out how to get whatever it is. I got to run around and find or go to the store and get it or whatever, you know. So uh, take, go ahead of time, uh, plan ahead of time. Don't wait for the last second. Uh, so that you can make sure that you have plenty of time to get all the materials and resources that you need uh, for the lesson. Um, just plan ahead. <laughs> plan ahead. Don't wait till the last second. And then evaluation is um, if your work, if you're part of a, an organization that actually evaluates the teaching, uh, or if you're in some sort of training and you have someone evaluating you, uh, that that's kind of what that means. Uh, because when you're actually teaching, uh, do you, the main evaluation is going to come from God himself uh, and or from others around you. The teachers or the students uh, can give you some feedback on, on your uh, performance as a teacher as well. But I don't want you to be so concerned about, you know, uh, evaluation and that sort of block. Uh, I don't want you to be concerned too much about that um, because we're doing it to, to please God. So we want his thumbs up and his okay more than anything else. So pray. Follow his guidance and direction. Plan ahead of time. Uh, use your tools. And you're going to be nervous. You're going to be nervous. You're going to be nervous. So you're going to fight through the nervousness. Uh, the more preparation um, we are, <laughs> that will evaluate. Okay. That's what said. We will evaluate. All right. So that's what evaluation will come from that. Uh, and so, uh, but you want to make sure that you're, um, that you are, as prepared as you possibly can, and that is before the lesson. Um, what happens once you get in the lesson, it's going to be, um, you, you, like I said, you're not really going to, 
be able to control everything, but you can control what you can control and then uh, uh, rely on the uh, guiding of the Holy Spirit to lead you through those other things and, and, uh, and just gain the confidence that you need. And that comes with practice. Uh, continuing to, to teach more and more, you will gain the confidence to be able to do these things uh, and do them in your sleep, uh, practically. But you're always going to be nervous. So nervousness is, is just always going to be there. But when you have the confidence, you can overcome it and teach confidently anyway. All right, that is all I have for tonight. Any comments or questions? Amen. Everybody good? No comments or questions, anything? If you now you can if you don't uh if you're looking through the material and you happen to come up with a comment or question, please reach out to me uh and that's uh and we'll help you with it uh even during the week. So don't wait till Tuesday. You don't have to wait till Tuesday. You can contact me anytime. So if no one has anything, everyone's camera and they're still muted, so I guess everyone's well. I got a thumbs up from Stephanie. Um Tassie, did you have anything? Yeah, um, one of the things that I did want to say is that just just to clarify uh, my comment in the chats is is we're not evaluating you, your call. You know, if you if you are called to to teach, you're called to teach. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we are effective, and we want to make sure that we are accurate in our demonstration. I think we have a responsibility uh as as pastors to you as students and you have a responsibility as teachers to your students uh to make sure that we are dealing with the word of god effectively and that you have that confidence and, and so evaluation should not be looked at as negative it should not be looked at as something that should terrify you uh because we're on your side we're, we're not here to fail you as Christians or to pass you as Christians or anything like that. Uh, but, you know, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And, and so that friction that takes place uh, through the form of evaluation, it will make you sharper. And that's what it's all about. So I, I just want to make sure that the heart of my comment, that you did not read anything into that based on fear or based on any past experiences that you've had. Uh, because I want to, and listen, uh, I, 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 you know, I don't know if Pastor uh, Darren talked about this or not, but you know, I want you to evaluate me. I want you to evaluate me. I, I would love for, and this is this is off the top, so you know, I, uh, please uh, forgive my impromptu. You know, uh, I do have a tendency sometimes to speak extemporaneously, uh, but I want to make sure uh, that you all are evaluating me you know, uh, that you are able to take, like if I'm teaching Bible study or Sunday morning serve a message, can you draw out my introduction, my outline, my conclusion from that? Did it flow? Did it make sense? Even the things that Pastor Darren was talking about tonight were the stories and the anecdotes, were they relevant? Or, or was I talking about the side of my neck, you know? I, 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 none of us are above reproach. None of us are above evaluation. And, and so, you know, when we say this, I, I want to put myself out there. It could start with me. It could start with me. And, and so if, if that's something that Pastor Darren chooses to do, let me know. And, and I would definitely, you know, show up and cause I would love to hear uh, your, your criticism of, you know, my methods and, um, uh, and in, in the in the formats that I use, so hopefully that clarified, you know, my heart and and kind of calmed, uh, the, you know, the the breathing, the hyperventilation, and things like that. <laughs> we are on your side, all right. God has called you to this thing, and and we're here to help you be the best version of that 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 you can be. Yeah, that definitely clears up, and I thank you for that. And you know, um, and we will have, and I. <laughs> Shared it with the class at the beginning. Uh, the last two weeks of the of this class, uh, there will be we'll give them a chance to to teach. They're going to have a teaching demonstration. Uh, and again, we're we're not evaluating the gift. The gift is there. We're just trying to help you sharpen up. 
And yeah. like I said, this is in this small environment like this, this is a good place to, to begin to train and to, to uh, ask questions and make your mistakes and all those other things, and we get them corrected. And then by the time you stand before people, you, you're, you've got more confidence and, and you're going to be ready. Amen. If, 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 if I may, uh, Pastor Darren, um, I, I would like to ask everybody a question. And this, this is, I guess, somewhat of a, a personal question, but I think it's also relevant. Um, but but I, I need to see y'all faces real quick because, you know, sometimes, well, not all the time, but nonverbal communication speaks louder than verbal communication. And and so I apologize if your hair is not on and if you, you know, you got 